So getting the most from your phone is easier than ever before, but squeezing out a little more productivity requires some extra steps. And here are a few things that we think you should enable and disable in some cases to help improve experience and make your Android phone a little more productive. So a quick precursor to this guide, you may need to check which Android version you are currently running. Most of our tips are aimed at Android devices running Android 14 or higher. So if something isn't on your phone, maybe it's time to update your device to the software if you haven't already. If not, don't worry, most will work and Android features are noted right away. So Pixel devices running Android 15 now offer a convenient new feature which I think a lot of you will love and that is automatic notification dismissal across multiple devices. This means that if you dismiss a notification on your Pixel tablet, for instance, it will also disappear on your Pixel phone and vice versa. I think this feature is particularly helpful for users who have a Pixel phone and a Pixel tablet as it reduces clutter and syncs your notifications, which has been a problem that has marred Android for years. To enable this cross-device notification dismissal on your Pixel phones and Pixel tablets, open the settings application, go to notifications, select dismiss notifications across Pixel devices, choose your account and toggle the feature on. I think it's a really good option to have if you get lots of notifications and you're wondering why are they not disappearing from my other devices. If you do run out of space regularly on your phone, then you might want to try this step. Android 15 introduced a new feature called App Archiving. And this allows you to temporarily remove applications from your device to save on storage space without deleting the in-app data. So when an application is archived, its icon remains on screen or on your home screen, but the app's software and temporary files are removed. Some apps may do this by default if you do hit your device storage limit, which is another nice feature. So long as you have a data or Wi-Fi connection, all you have to do is tap the icon and it'll re-download and work normally. You can manually archive applications or let the Play Store automatically archive unused applications. This setting does need to be toggled by going to the Play Store, Settings, General, now automatically archive apps and toggle that on. To restore an archived app icon, as I say, you just tap its icon, but you can prevent specific apps from being archived automatically by disabling the Manage App If Use setting in the Apps Info page. All of your app data is saved, so it's a foolproof way to stop space being eaten by unused apps on your phone. If you have devices beyond your phone that support six gigahertz Wi-Fi connections, I think you owe it to yourself to enable those fastest data transfer rates for Wi-Fi. The mobile hotspot mode now lets you enable six gigahertz mode to enable smoother and faster data rates when sharing your connection with other hardware. So as I say, if your devices are capable, you can significantly boost the speed and reliability of the mobile hotspot when you're using it. Another bonus is that by enabling this, you're potentially gonna improve the performance in high congested Wi-Fi areas. And this can be particularly beneficial for activities like streaming, high definition videos, or even online gaming, if you are wanting to do that. The downside is that the availability may vary depending on your region and your carrier. Some regions have specific regulations governing the use of six gigahertz frequencies. To check though, and we'll enable this for yourself, just head to settings, hotspot, speed and compatibility and six gigahertz and enable it. You'll know straight away if it's not available as the options will be grayed out. So lots of phone manufacturers offer work and personal accounts to help separate your private and professional life. But on Pixel, this manifests itself now as private space. And this was introduced in Android 15. And it's basically a siloed portion of your phone where you can add or store personal files, banking applications and other sensitive stuff. It's also a great way to keep things separate and away from the fun side of your phone so that you have a productive side separate to the core Android interface. Logging in with a unique Google account also gives you the ability to download apps, games and other stuff from the Google Play Store, but also stops content from appearing anywhere else on your phone. To enable this, it's pretty easy. Just go to settings, system, go to security and privacy. You should see an option for private space. You can tweak this as you see fit, add applications. It's a really good tool and you can find this within the app drawer. So the autofill feature on Android is really good at quickly logging into your accounts and the various services needed on a day-to-day -day basis. However, if someone bypasses your lock screen, the autofill function can be a little bit insecure if you have this set up. That's why I think you should enable another layer of security by requiring biometric authentication before a password is automatically entered and you're logged in. Might seem like overkill, but trust us, I think it's definitely worth enabling. Ordinarily, your phone will just breeze through this process, but go to settings, passwords and autofill, preferences and authenticate with biometrics before filling in passwords. Now, when you try to log in, you'll need to use your face unlock or scan your fingerprint before it tries to add this sensitive data. 
Google hasn't yet added modes as this video going live, but the default focus mode is a super simple way to silence distracting applications or limit them from being used. And you're probably not using this as you might want to. It's part of the digital wellbeing suite and lets you set up a basic schedule with times and days in which certain applications are locked or blocked from being fully opened. It does mean that you will get zero notifications from those distracting apps that at least you've chosen or chosen to be silenced during the schedule, but you can still open them. You can have a five minute window before they close again, or you can just impose or unpause them for 24 hours if you do need access. It's a really good option. Play around with this. You can find the perfect setup for you. So phone displays are getting better and brighter just about every single year from the high end to the low end. And that's great during normal daylight hours, but not so great when things get dark or if you go into a darkened environment. Sometimes your phone screen can be way too bright. That's where the extra dim toggle might come in handy as it dips the screen brightness just a bit lower than the system default. This is technically an accessibility feature and the effect is super, super subtle when you have it enabled. It even works when the screen is above that minimum brightness level and it lessens the luminance to make it slightly less painful to use your phone in practically any lighting condition. I'd liken it to a filter as it adds a bit of darkness to every area of the UI. To find this, go to settings, accessibility, and you should see an option for extra dim, and this can be added to your quick settings panel as a super fast toggle to enable and disable. So personally, I miss the notification LED like crazy because it was the least distracting way to know just what unread notifications I had waiting for me. We probably won't get these LEDs back, but you can at least set your camera flash to pulse if you have an unread message or email or other notification on your device with your Android phone. You can even set your screen to flash a specific color to indicate that you have a notification if you do prefer that option, but this won't be visible unless your phone is phone screen is on. Might not be the perfect solution, but it might be a way to simply remind you that you have something ready to check or read when you next pick up your phone. Just to find this, just go to settings, notifications, flash notifications, and you can tweak this as you want to. So if you want to use two applications at the same time, then you might want to set up some app pairs. This is a super simple way to quickly launch into split screen mode on your phone with your favorite applications because you get a home screen shortcut that will open the apps straight away. To create an app pair, launch the applications you want in split screen mode in your preferred layout, that means top and bottom. Then open the recent app menu and long press the two app icons towards the top of the status bar. Now press save app pair to add a quick widget to your home screen. The order in which you've saved the apps is preserved, but there is no limit to how many app pairs you can make. And you can add these to builders on your home screen if you have lots of applications that you do wanna run side by side or specific pairs that you really like to use at the same time. If your phone does support this option, then you'll probably get a lot of added utility from circle to search that you probably didn't know you needed. Effectively, this lets you quickly take a photo or screenshot and then use the power of Google search to work out what's going on, what something is, or where to get more information. You can use the text queries to get even more tailored information and learn more about something that you're unsure of. The downside is that circle to search isn't yet available on all Android phones, but it is widely or more widely available than it has been before. To access this, you'll just need to go into settings, search for circle to search in the tabs itself. You may be able to enable this from there. Usually this is activated by a long press on that gesture bar on your home screen, and you can do this on absolutely anywhere in the Android system. So I guess not every one of those features alone would make your Android phone a more productive tool, but they might help reduce distractions or improve the day-to-day -day experience and get you doing more. Do you have any tips that you wanna share though? Let us know in the comment sections below how you make your phone more productive. But thanks for watching, until next time, I will speak to you later.